Hello, it's Sunday, July 31st, 2016, and as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. Hey, welcome back, everybody, and thank you so much for taking time to download and listen to the Depressed Not Dead podcast with me, your host, Jim Olke. I know everybody's got, you know, things going on. They're short of time. If you're like me, you've got lots on your plate trying to figure out new ways, better ways to get ahead or stay ahead of your mental illness. So I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to give a listen, uh, some of you week after week, show after show, I guess I should say. You're all wonderful, and I appreciate all of you. And of course, the housekeeping, we've got to get out of the way, how you can get a hold of me, um, jamolke at gmail.com, on Twitter at jamolke, Facebook, facebook.com slash jamolke, and on the website, jamolke.info. That's J-A-M-O-A-L-K-I. So I guess that's it. Uh, I do have a few things on my mind today. I don't know if they're going to be terribly profound. So apologies if you're looking for some deep insight. Um, But here I am. There you are. And uh, let's get going. So a couple of weeks ago, I was recording a show and I added this little bit about uh, an online friend that I've made of sorts, uh, Meg from the Sick Not Weak family, which is where I came across her. Um, she has a she has a blog and many other things that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But I, I actually had recorded probably two, two and a half minutes of a piece of just about her. I got a hold of her on Facebook or Twitter, excuse me, and asked her if it would be okay if I did share the information. I I did this after I recorded it. And of course she said yes. Uh, She has a YouTube channel, which does include her first and last name. So I wanted to make it clear that, hey, can I share this as well? Uh, I didn't know what her her feelings were on privacy, although she is uh, incredibly outspoken and really not very... um, you know, she doesn't hide her illnesses. She doesn't hide who she is. Um, in fact, she puts it all out there and she's really inspiring. And because of that, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about her, give you guys some of her details, you know, at web addresses and things like that. And I, I just think you'll get a lot from her. So here we go. Uh, her name is Meg, Megan. Um, like I said, I bumped into her through on Twitter through the hashtag sick, not weak, and she's just fantastic. She's a, a young lady going to college, working, getting, working her way through college. Um, and she takes all this time to be a social presence, uh, about mental illness. Um, so first of all, you can find her on YouTube, uh, which was one of the first things I, I think the first tweet I saw of her was, Hey, I posted a new video. So I went to check it out. So if you go to YouTube, you can search, uh, M H talks with Megan, M E G A N all kind of glom together there. Uh, in YouTube, hit enter and you'll find her, uh, probably first hit. And she's got, I don't know, I don't know, a dozen, 15 videos, maybe. Uh, some of them are very personal stories that she's putting out there to share with people. Um, and also I think, uh, similar to the way I started my podcast here is kind of a catharsis, kind of a, a um, self-care kind of therapeutic way to deal with some of what's going on with her. But I mean, some of her her videos are uh, talking about the importance of exercise to her. And, and one of the things she always has on Twitter is when she's going to the gym, she's uh, very, very active in going to the gym and working out and very proud of what she's accomplished. And she should be. Uh, she has other videos on speaking out um, about your mental illness, about not hiding uh, not keeping it a secret from others. Uh, one video on the importance of therapy and on and on and on. I mean, it's uh, just a variety of topics. And I think you'll enjoy uh, watching them all and listening to what this young lady has to say. Uh, check her out again, MH Talks with Megan. 
I'll search that all glom together on YouTube and she'll pop right up. Uh, if YouTube's not your thing and you are on Twitter, um, she is MH Warrior Megzi. That's uh, all one all one word again, glom together. MH Warrior Megzi, M E G S Y. So look her up on there and she's a great follow. She's always got, you know, she tweets and retweets news stories, informational stories, inspiring articles. Uh, she's, you know, she's one of those people, if you're, uh, if you're a friend, you're always a friend, it seems like. And, uh, yeah, so always good information coming from her. So give her a follow there as well. If you prefer just reading a blog, uh, she has one of those. Uh, it's, uh, www.stigmafreezone.weebly.com. That's S-T-I-G-M-A-F-R-E-E-Z-O-N-E dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. And, uh, you know, she posts, it seems like once, maybe twice a week, which is uh, anybody who's followed me is clearly more than what I'm doing on my blog. And there again, she talks about some personal stories. Um, she's got a blog entry on self-care. She's got um, at least one, maybe two on the importance of having a support system couple little bits on um, how you can help someone with a mental illness. So, and that's another thing. She, she's putting stuff out that isn't necessarily only catered to folks with mental illnesses. She's putting stuff out there for those who care for, for folks with mental illness. And, uh, you know, she's, it just seems like she's doing so much. Uh, really great stuff there. So check her out. Again, I'll put links to all these uh, in the blog post. So if you haven't seen my blog, and now it's time to go so you can get these great addresses and find out uh, more about Megan. Yeah, so I said I had a couple things on my mind. Um, really the biggest thing right now and, and the, the, the biggest topic uh, monopolizing the house is our annual trip now. It's been annual for Nora and her kids for some time, and now will be my th third trip with them, uh, is the annual trip to Cape Cod. Uh, Nora's dad summers in Cape Cod. He winters down in Florida. I may have mentioned this before. So, But this time when we go out, uh, we're having some extra friends and family come out and Nora and I will be having a wedding ceremony on the beach in Cape Cod. So if you're around uh, August 8th of this year, if you're near Skakit Beach on Cape Cod, come on by, say hi, throw some rice or flowers or whatever as Nora's uh, walking through the sand. But yeah, so you know, I've mentioned before that you know legally Nora and I are married. It was a decision uh, that she she essentially made, and you know, I'm, I'd be a fool not to go along with. Uh, but essentially, she wanted to ensure that that I had means to receive the kind of care that I need via insurance. So we had kind of a, I guess we'd call it a shotgun wedding, but you know, not not what it's usually what <laughs> why you'd usually have a shotgun wedding. Uh, but it was just a, a civil service uh, in front of a judge with a couple of co-workers as witnesses. So we've, you know, that happened uh, almost a year ago. But we, we had wanted to do something that included our family, our kids, uh, our parents, um, you know, a few friends. But, you know, really small, just something to, I think really it started out with, with the kids. And something that would be, it was important to us that they were part of our wedding, our marriage, right? You know, and both divorced and, you know, new people. And Nora's kids, I think, pretty well get along with me. We seem to do okay. My kids get along with Nora and her with them. Um, but there's not as, you know, there's not as much contact, obviously. I'm, I'm here and I, you know, I see... I see Nora's kids all the time. So, you know, my kids, it's twice a year, roughly for about three weeks each trip. I guess that's not true. About three weeks in summer and a week in, you know, spring break or spring break or uh, Christmas break is what we alternate with, which is great, which is fantastic. And I am fortunate enough that I get to make extra trips back to see my girls. But, you know, just it's it's always a little... I guess not super awkward because Nora's great. And my kids are great. But, you know, it's not that level of, of comfort that Nora's kids have with me. So, you know, we wanted to have this. We wanted everybody to be part of it. 
we don't have flower girls or groomsmen or anything like that. It's a small, small group, including us. We've got 29 people. Uh, it's just going to be on the beach. Everybody should be able to have a front row seat or maybe second row. Um, I guess we short in front, tall in the back, and everybody will have a front row. You know, so this is something we wanted to do. And uh, there's a thing in Nora's family about wedding dates being, uh, you know, this is August 8th, so 8-8. Uh, you know, I think her, in a previous marriage, I think it was February 2nd, I think 2-2. And some, you know, some aunts and uncles and whatnot, they've got, you know, a 7-7 or a 6-6 or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's fun. Great. Um, looking at the, the calendar, August 8th was the best option that we had this year. Obviously, going into September, there's school for the kids. Um, and June just wasn't uh, logistically possible for a lot of people. Uh, in July as well, I believe. Uh, so here we are, August 8th, coming up, going to Cape Cod. So we're leaving Wednesday evening after Nora gets off work, driving about four or five hours, getting to stay in a hotel, getting up the next day, driving to Michigan, pick up my two oldest, spend the night there. Uh, and I, oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned, my two youngest are here right now. They came in to town uh, three days ago and just been having a really great time. Uh, like I said, they're fabulous kids. I, I take no credit in them being wonderful. They are just on their own, absolutely fantastic. You know, and so they've been here, um, was it Wednesday night? I said, we're going to take off, head to Michigan, get up Friday, drive. I don't know what we decided, eight, nine hours uh, cutting through Canada. Uh, so I can, I, I told my friends at Sick Not Week, that, uh, which is a Canadian-based website, I will wave to them as I go by. Um, and we're staying at an Airbnb somewhere in New York, I think. Get up Saturday and fight our way onto the Cape. And we've got a house we're renting for a week. Uh, my parents, my brother, and my niece will get in the next day. Nora's sister and her nieces are showing up, uh, I believe, Saturday as well. Uh, friends and... Um, Half sisters and whatnot from Nora's side are getting into town also. And my very good friend Dave is coming out with his lovely and talented wife. Uh, and they are staying there as well. So it's it's going to be a, a good time, I hope. So, yeah, so that's what's coming up for the next, uh, you know, it's, it's almost two weeks, right? Um, we'll be on the Cape Saturday through Saturday with, what, three hours, three day driving before, three day driving before back so yeah it's 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 a significant amount of time uh most of a lot of it is driving but it, it's always fantastic there uh, being the cape it's a really somewhat narrow piece of land so there's uh you know atlantic ocean facing side you can go to beaches there and then there's the kind of the cape part the interior which is a lot more calm water and a lot of really uh, crazy long sloping um water beaches um that skake it where we're having the wedding there's I, th I think the difference between high tide and low tide is is pushing like three quarters of a mile that you can walk out just because of the low slope of the whole thing and you know, it's so much fun the tide goes out you go out you find hermit crabs and you know anybody who happens to be left over and you just walk and walk and walk and it's just fantastic so i'm really looking forward to that so again this is you know these, these are my reasons uh, up front about why I may not have a show coming out in the next couple of weeks. I'd really like to try to record something. Um, I, I'll give it a try, I think. Uh, I can't promise uh, that it will happen or that the uh, sound quality will be all that great. But it, it might be fun to kind of do that, go out for a walk uh, on the beach and record myself uh, just kind of mindless mind stream of thought that's what I'm getting at who knows uh, I'm rambling now so you're all getting bored and you know one more thing I do want to apologize uh, for kind of delayed replies on some of my communications email and whatnot like I said I've been kind of running around crazy lately doing this I had to drive out to Michigan to get my two little ones and bring them back you know that's you know that was what 24 hours of driving almost yeah so I'm sorry I've been busy just kind of running around and uh yeah oh it, you know what I, and running yeah um I think I mentioned before I started I started getting back into running a little bit and I successfully completed what four or five three mile runs well, last night, last night, uh-huh, I ran four miles for the first time in, 
oh, I don't know, a year at least, maybe more. It was terribly difficult, uh, not really enjoyable, not that any running was really ever enjoyable for me, but, you know, I haven't been on a scale in some time, so I can't give an exact figure, but there's a lot of me to move around and propel down the street and up the hills and all right now. If I had to guess, I'm probably 40 pounds above, if not a little more, what my half marathon weight was. And a couple of that with kind of trying to come back without really doing, I haven't been doing a lot of exercising, even going to the gym and just working on, you know, muscles and core and things like that. So yeah, so it was, it was difficult, you know, I'm not, don't give me a pat on the back. I'm not looking for that, but I just wanted to, you know, let you guys know that, Hey, uh, you know, what a month, month and a half ago, I was just a big pile of mess, kind of just I don't know, like a blob just rolling through the house, kind of miserable and couldn't find any motivation to brush my teeth when, you know, if, if Nora wasn't here to keep me going, I, I and you know, now here I am, I, you know, I'm up to running four miles. I, I believe I've lost a little bit of weight, uh, either, either that, or I've stretched out my belt so much that, that I'm down to a new, uh, belt hole. You know, there's, so there's, if anything, hopefully th we can take this as proof that there's hope for, for me. And we think we can deduce if there's hope for me, there's hope for you. Like I try to say, you know, keep going, keep being open to the possibility of things getting better and be open to, to allowing things to come, be, be open, be, allow yourself to, to not be successful with plan A, but be open. Okay, well, let's try tr plan B. Plan C, plan D, you know, if you get to plan G and you can't think of an H, well, okay, then just, just hold tight for a little bit and maybe do some other reading, talk to someone new, find something else out. And then you get a plan H and, you know, at some point th there will be a plan. There will be a scheme, a, a set of medications or, a, you know, a therapist or something, something is, something can and will come along to help, to make things feel better, to make you feel better, to make the days feel better. Everything feel better. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not going to promise that you'll be, you know, the, the life of the party again, but you know, we don't have to be the life of the party. Uh, you know, we just want to, we want to have good days, right? We want to wake up and have something each day that we look forward to lay down at night and say, yeah, you know, I'm glad I did these few things today and okay, time to get some sleep and I'll wake up tomorrow and I got this going on. You know, that, that would be great. I, I'm, I'm not at that point yet. Like, I, you know, I, you know, I'm really pushing this, this running thing. I think it's something that did well for me a couple of years ago and I, I think it can do well for me now, but I don't, you know, I don't often go to bed and say, oh, geez, this was a great day. Uh, even when I run, you know, that four mile run last night, I didn't, you know, come home, shower and get in the bed and say, whew, four mile run. Yes. I'm still kind of negative Nancy there and say, Ooh, four mile run. That was terrible. And oh my gosh, do I hurt? I'm going to hurt so much in the morning. And oh my gosh, that my pace was awful. You know, at least I'm thinking those things instead of right now thinking about how I'm going to kill myself. So right now, this is my scheme. This is my plan. This is what's going on. Uh, I feel like I've got a, a good mixture of medication, which, you know, helps me have energy and seems to smooth things out a bit. I'm kind of hopeful with my new therapist. Uh, we haven't quite, I haven't quite gotten into that comfort level with him yet, but I like that he doesn't. He doesn't let me, it doesn't seem like he's going to let me be kind of, uh, I don't know what I want to say here. Um, he's not going to let me be neutral on things. He's going to kind of push me to take a side on things. And in that case, in that way, kind of help force me into realizing new things and, and taking a stand and making decisions and being proactive all the way, not even, you know, reactive would have been a step ahead uh, from where I was a few months ago, but he's, you know, we're not even going there. We're just saying, hey, be proactive and let's see what we can do to, to start 
building all these things back up to make you the, you know, the best Jamulki you can be. <laughs> so yeah, uh, how did I get here? Oh, running, uh, blah, blah, blah. So after, uh, after Cape Cod, when I get back, I've already, I've already uh, warned Nora that we are going to start going to the gym together is if we can three nights a week uh, with her work and things like that, it does get kind of tricky, but I'm going to do my best to get her to the gym three nights a week, which means I'd be going to the gym three nights a week. And I told her there may be days I go to the gym twice because I don't want to miss out. So I may be going to the gym, you know, in the morning. I may uh, have to cut down on my bagel time at the uh, good old St. Paul Bagelry. But yeah, I want to get to the gym again and start doing that and, you know, riding on the bike there. So it's kind of a cross training and lifting weights and, you know, just trying to find a way to make my body feel better and hopefully get a little bit of, um, I don't know, encouragement, a little bit of uh, more self-respect, more, uh, uh, there's a word I'm looking for here. You guys will tell me about it. Thanks. But yeah, so I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to uh, get back into reading maybe 15, 20 minutes a day, maybe more if I catch a really good book. But I want to do that I to spend more time practicing self-care and acknowledging that uh, I need to do I need to proactively do things to care for myself, both mentally and emotionally and also physically and that they're important. And I'm not convinced today that they're important, but everybody says they're important. So I'd be a fool not to check this out and give it a try. I'm also going to crack open my DBT book um, and start working on that a little bit because I am pretty certain, uh, at least it seems obvious to me, that kind of my borderline personality disorder has af affected me a lot and I think may be a big cause as to my depression. So I need I need to get into that and start finding ways to better advocate for myself either, uh, you know, not so much um, as in the mental health arena, but more in the social arena and feeling comfortable there. So yeah, I'm going to get into that. Um, you know, and, and what I actually told Nora, we, were, we sat her down and we were talking and I, I, I told her that, you know, I, I, I think I'm really at a point where I can kind of focus and dedicate time to making the most of this time that, you know, my sweet, loving, amazing Nora is giving me, you know, that's, that's why I came to St. Paul and it's been, a, you know, I've been here a long time and, you know, I had some ups, had some downs and, you know, hopefully I'm not being overly optimistic here, but I think right now I can, I can make a better use of this time that she's giving me and I need to do that. So that's my plan, you know, gym, reading, self-care, DBT book. Uh, I got to figure out some ways to have better communication with my girls back in Michigan, uh, with Nora's kids, uh, even with Nora herself. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking these are going to happen in one day, one week, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it's time to start seeing what I can do with this. You know, I'm not feeling as scared, I guess, as I was the past year and a half. I'm not nearly as hopeless. I don't feel like a zombie, you know, um, I, maybe some of you can, can relate to this, but you just, you know, and I do at times, but, but it, it's not, uh, it's not all day, every day where you just feel like, like you can't, like you, you couldn't come up with a thought if you needed to, like you couldn't find the directions to get up and walk across the room that you just, you're on some kind of autopilot and you know, maybe zombie isn't, isn't a right analogy because, uh, I think zombies move around a whole lot more than, than I would. And I did certainly when I was feeling lower than I am today, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you feel that way sometimes too. And, you know, I, I think I went through, I, I, I did the, uh, the, what doing the laundry and how it is similar to taking out a gallbladder. Right. Uh, you know, but just that, that you, you I feel like I have some control over me, some control over what's going to happen today. And I want to try to make the most of that. And 
you know, yeah, yeah, a big part of me is worried that it's not it's not going to stick, that this is just another one of those ups before the horrible crashing downs. But uh, it's here right now, and I hope to make the most of it. Whew. Yeah, I just really want to make the most of it. Um, so, yeah, I, that's all I got for you today, folks. Um, you all know how to get a hold of me, uh, even though I'm... I'm going to be on vacation the next two weeks as it were you know hit me up if you got something on your mind something you want to chat about um i've realized i've tried to match up times to have uh twitter chats with some folks and it's even with my seemingly wide open schedule uh it's been difficult to find times when we can just sit and chat uh and I, I really want to. I know they have things they want to, to talk about and I want to be there. I want to help them. I want to be that person that can help them start to open up. Um, but yeah, you all you all know how to get a hold of me. Um, email, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, if you got something on your mind, let me know. I'm, I'd still love to hear from everybody. But that's it. You know, I'll... Uh, Maybe I'll drop something while I'm on vacation. If not, uh, I'll see you when I am uh, legally and socially married. So, folks, take care, be safe, and be well. Thanks. Blah, blah, blah.